Now for the discrete time frequency response, let us consider a very interesting example of a moving average system which is having an impulse response which is 1 over m1 plus m2 plus 1 and this response is valid when the integer value n is between minus m1 and m2 m1 and m2 are positive integers so if this is less than 0 so that means the system is non-causal anyways we are asked to find the frequency response that is the discrete time Fourier transform of this impulse response which is simply h of e g omega and that is a summation from minus infinity to infinity h of n e to the power minus g omega n the standard definition of the discrete time Fourier transform now let us insert the value of this h n over here and that is we would have 1 over m1 plus m2 plus 1 appearing over here plus the summation which was from minus infinity to infinity now it is restricted from minus m1 to m2 so n is from minus m1 to m2 and it is 0 otherwise so we are not considering from minus infinity to infinity and we are only considering this range where this is valid otherwise it is going to be 0 now using a geometric series so we have if the summation is from n1 to n2 alpha to the power n so the output would be alpha to the power n1 minus alpha to the power n2 plus 1 over 1 minus alpha and this is valid when n2 the integer value of n2 is greater than n1 so this is the same case which we have over here and hence we can apply this geometric series on this so we would have e to the power j omega m1 we had a minus sign here and there was a minus sign at the m1 so we had a plus over here now that is e to the power j omega m1 minus e to the power minus j omega m2 plus 1 over 1 minus alpha that is 1 minus e to the power j omega now this is a closed form but we need to simplify this further to understand it and make it suitable so that we can plot the frequency response and the phase response of this system function so for that we split the denominator and first solve that and later on we would solve the numerator so in the denominator we have 1 minus e to the power minus g omega so what we do is we extract this e to the power minus j omega by 2 outward so inward we would have e to the power j omega 2 minus e to the power minus j omega by 2 so that is if you multiply this with this the output would be simply 1 that is minus j omega by 2 plus j omega by 2 so it will become e to the power 0 which is simply 1 and similarly e to the power minus j omega by 2 and e to the power minus j omega by 2 so they are the, they are having the same argument so it would turn out to be simply e to the power minus j omega so in the next equality we simply multiply it by 2j and divide by 2j and hence this is simply the definition of a sine function uh, using Euler's identity so we have sine of omega by 2 and the rest of the terms are as is that is 2j e to the power minus j omega 2 similarly for the numerator again we express it as e to the power j omega m1 minus j omega m2 plus 1 and again we take common and this is that common value that is e to the power minus j omega m2 plus 1 minus m1 by 2 so if we have taken this common so this value would turn to e j omega m1 plus m2 plus 1 by 2 now if we are to multiply this common factor with this so you can observe that there's a minus sign here and there's a plus sign here so that means this m2 and m2 would cancel off simply similarly plus 1 and plus 1 would cancel off but there's a minus here and this minus with this minus would become plus right and there's a plus here so these two terms m1 and m1 would add up to remove this 2 so if we multiply this with this term we would simply have this exponential similarly if we multiply this with the second term that is m1 plus m2 plus 1 by 2 we would get back our second term over here so this is just a some balancing act is there uh, when we take the common 
but they are equal so next we multiply and divide by 2j over here we divide by 2j and here we multiply by 2j so we can have 2j e to the power minus j omega m2 plus m1 minus m1 over here times all of this would return back a sine function which is sine omega m1 plus m2 plus 1 by 2 now again remember that this is the numerator and this part is the denom denominator so this 2j would cancel with this 2j and similarly the e j omega by 2 would cancel off with this e j omega by 2 so hence we would be left with simply 1 over m1 plus m2 plus 1 sine omega m1 plus m2 plus 1 by 2 over sine omega by 2 times the exponential function which is e to the power minus j omega m2 minus m1 by 2 now note that for the case of m1 equal to 0 that is now we are considering that the moving average filter is starting from 0 and it is going until uh, 4 so in this case we can plot the magnitude and the phase responses and this part is the magnitude of it and this part is the phase of it which is plotted over here for the values of m1 equal to 0 and m2 equal to 4 so important point is that you can see this is periodic so whatever is between minus pi to pi that is again repeating uh, reappearing from pi to 3 pi so it is repeating itself and this is true for the magnitude as well as the phase plot furthermore this is basically sort of a low pass filter and that would smooth out the higher frequencies thus solving its purpose moreover so in this range we have a linear phase response from minus 2 pi by 5 to 2 pi by 5 